What's your favorite color? Purple and, and some variations thereof, I guess. Why purple? One? I I don't know. I think the I think some particular shades of it almost have a a visual depth that I think are unique. I just find appealing. How tall are you? Five eight on a good day. What is that? Mean? <laughs> uh, you know, I've 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 had wildly different results from people measuring my height. Most fall between five seven and five eight. But I went in for a physical for a job one day, and they this woman swore I was five two. Swore to God I was five two. Of course, I'm drawing a blank on all the people I really like to read. Uh, Vonnegut, of course. Uh, it kind of forces you to take a take a look at the world in a different way. And everyone, everyone has their established point of view, but constantly challenging yourself to see it from a different point of view, I think, is a, it's a really interesting way to go about it. Which is kind of what attracted me to this when Clint mentioned it. You, know, you see these people and you have no idea what their point of view is. Nothing, no idea what they are. What's your favorite food? Chile rellenos. What's your least favorite food? Mayonnaise. What is your favorite beverage? Coca-Cola. What is your least favorite beverage? Well, you know, it's a tough one. I never really thought about anything like that. Uh, Jägermeister, I guess. <laughs> that is a very good it's answer. Pretty, pretty damn foul stuff. On that, on that note, what's your favorite alcoholic beverage? Ah, you know, for really simple questions, these uh, these kind of involve some thought, yeah. Uh, I guess tequila, white tequila. Is it a, a sipping thing for you, or is there a mixed drink that you prefer with? Somewhere in the middle. Uh, tequila in seven, I think, is a really nice compromise. Seems like every bar can do a tequila in seven. Yeah. What is your favorite smell? That's a really tricky one for me. I, uh, I don't really have much of a sense of smell. Uh, so, mm, I guess vanilla is one that I can still really get that I enjoy. High-pitched beeping. Is there a direct relationship to something, or is it just... Nope. It just drives me up the wall. If, if it's a phone ring, if it's a watch alarm, if it's a, a, a wake-up alarm, whatever it is, it just drives me absolutely up the wall. I've never really thought about that. Uh... Can you tell me a joke? <laughs> All right, so uh, Boudreau is out back of his house tending his little garden on a Sunday, doing nothing but tending his tomatoes and his peppers, and his friends uh, Thibodeau and Jean-Baptiste come around the corner. Say, Boudreau, baby, you best sit down. We got some bad news for you. Say, why? What could be that bad? No, just sit down. This is going to be rough. Jean-Baptiste step up, say, uh, Baby, you know your wife Clotilde, she went down to check them crawfish traps, but uh, we found her floating face down in the swamp this morning. I said, oh no, what I'm going to do without my Clotilde? I know her since I was a baby boy, how my life could get any worse. And Tuvidil steps in and says, no, nah, okay, it's okay. I got some better news, maybe this is going to help you something. Oh no, what could make my day any better? I said, well now, Boudreaux, you know when we found her, she had two dozen fat blue crab on her, so we're going to run her again tonight. <laughs> it's it's one of my favorite Boudreaux Thibodeau jokes of all time. Though. I didn't know there were Boudreaux Thibodeau jokes. Oh oh yeah yeah there's there's dozens and dozens and dozens of them. At work I tend to be fairly straightforward and clean. At at home I'm a little less organized. Do you believe in luck? No. When you were a kid, did you have a favorite toy? My BB gun, probably. Why was that your favorite? Sit in the backyard for hours and just kind of pick things off slowly but surely let the afternoon go away, you know? Sit, sit out there in the backyard, do it with all the friends over, sit out there in the backyard, do it with nobody around, and it's still fun. Have you ever been in a fight? Yeah. Junior high and high school, two of them, I think. Stupid kids being impatient with each other. No, no, I, it was both times were with friends. 
And we just got tired of each other's bullshit, kicked the crap out of each other, walked away and you know, stopped at 7-Eleven, got smokes and, and a Coke and went home. <laughs> you know, bet the next day we were back to hanging out again. It was funny. Now, if you were one of your friends, how do you think you'd describe yourself? I don't know. That's something I'm working on right now. now you, you've kind of caught me at a, at a point in life where I'm trying to readjust myself, I guess. So uh, there, there's a lot of things I just don't have answers for right now. I don't really have a really big hang up on a band or a song or anything like that. Uh, this morning I was listening to the Wild, Wild Chapatulas. Hey, hey, engines are coming. Cause it's Mardi Gras, you know. Uh, so then, today we're gonna go with we're gonna go with Hey, hey, engines are coming by Wild Wild Chapatulas. Well, I, uh, I've I've been a, a very, uh, ooh, I want to say bordering reclusive person for for a lot of years of my life. Uh, Another reason I was interested in doing this is because this is not something that's in my character at all. So I, I think stepping out and allowing myself to, you know, putting myself in this situation is probably really healthy for me uh, because it's a little uncomfortable and outside of my nature. Learn to love yourself and learn to love each other. In that order. It's a good clarification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you don't love yourself, you're never going to love anybody else correctly. You know? No, actually, I like the abstract. Uh, when I was younger, I had a hard time with maths with the abstract. Actually, no, that, I take that back. The abstracts were easy. I couldn't do the math to prove it. Um, no, no, no. I, I really enjoy thought exercises like that. I like wrapping my head around things. Uh, -uh. I'm good. I think the most recent, uh, I've got a nephew who sent me a lot of information pointing out that the world is quite possibly a hologram, holographic projection. And it, it took me a few minutes to catch the, you know, to you know, wrap my head around that. And, uh, it's a work in progress, I guess. What is the saddest you've ever met? That's a really hard one. Um... I'd rather not answer that. What's the happiest you've ever been? <laughs> I don't know. When you were a kid, did someone sing you a lullaby, tell you a poem, a saying, a prayer? My mom had a, had a version of Mary Had a Little Lamb. It's not really comforting, but it stuck with me. It's uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, it follows her no more for what she thought was H2O was H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. A and my mom just thought this was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> I, I, I love her to death. She's, she's a little nutty and I love her to death. Um, do you believe in ghosts? I can't say I don't. Uh, I can't imagine why not. You know, just because we haven't measured it on a dial yet doesn't really mean we can't prove it that I'm always trying to be a better person. Not always successful, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm working my ass off. What subject or lesson do you think should be mandatory that is not currently being taught? Well, I think there's, I think there's a, a few really good ones. Uh, you know, everyone argues about religion being taught in schools, but realistically, I think all religions ought to be taught in school. How do you how do you develop an understanding and a tolerance for someone on the other side of the world who believes something you never heard of before? You have no concept. Why are we worrying about just teaching one set? Are we teaching all of them? Everybody a good point of view, you know, a good rounded worldview, instead of pigeonholing these kids into what happens to be the religion that they, you know, where they live. That and I think languages. We ought to teach kids languages at a younger at a younger age. What do you think is the most important ingredient in a successful romantic relationship? Honesty. And being able to share yourself. No matter how dark and scary it might be. You better do it. It's not going to work. At some point, there will be undue stress because of it. I haven't been doing anything recently, but I, uh, you know, I gunsmith and I shoot and I tinker. Just like the either take things apart or figure out how they were put back together. Yeah. You know, I've made a couple things that closely resembled knives. Yeah. 
all sorts of carpentry and build this, build that. Uh, recently taught myself how to make some, uh, what would that be? Uh, uh, pi, pyro, uh, what the hell would the word? Pyrotechnic, yeah, it's some, uh, some pyrotechnic uh, compositions. <laughs> so this is pretty cool. Like, like I said, uh, you know, distinctly uncomfortable, but really cool. Yeah, very, very healthy, I think. Thank you very much for being part of it. Bill, it's a pleasure. Thank you. The first 20 minutes I get to meet somebody. I